I... I've been to many museums throughout the world, and honestly and objectively, I can say this is the best. I know you might think I'm slightly biased because I'm a fan of Isambard Kingdom and Brunel, but this museum is fairly new. How long has it been open, Mr. Bennett? It's been open since uh, late March last year. 20... 2018. 2018. And I came here in the summer and I was flabbergasted at the array of exhibits. And I want to try and encourage children who study Brunel in school to want to come here, especially the children I've been teaching academic summer. And we're in Bristol, adjacent to Brunel's Irish ship, the Great Britain. And I think, although Brunel's life started in Portsmouth and he worked in the early days of his career in London, went to Bristol, down to the west of England, and it finished in London, his career with the Great Eastern, this is the epicentre of what remains of Brunel's world. Not just the ship, but I'm going to tell you what there is to visit in this beautiful museum. There's letters by his father, Sir Mark Brunel. There are portraits, and every biography has the portrait of, Drake, of Brunel sitting next to the, the table. And he's got diaries in here. There's his ivory folding ruler. There are plans and designs for bridges, railway stations, and they've even got the original bell from the great western ship, which was launched in 1837? 1837 or 38, I think. Thank you. There's a painting of the great western ship. There's a sketchbook, galore of Brunel, including there's a page on the propeller that he designed, which the computer has shown is about 99% efficient. There's a letter that Brunel wrote to the great Britain company advocating the use of a propeller. There's a maiden voyage log of the Great Western. There's an 1842 drawing of Brunel having a haircut in Genoa in Italy. And there's an actual sample of the telegraph cable upstairs which was used to lay the Great Eastern. Brunel's will there, dated the 8th of December 1858, drawn up eight months prior to his death, and in it he leaves £90,000, which equates to £10 million in today's money, and biographers have said that it was not an awful lot of money for what his fame had achieved, because he spent a lot of his money in sinking into the project of the Great Eastern Ship and he left the money to his family and to his private doctor who accompanied Brunel to Egypt where he was trying to restore his health just before he died. And what was really exciting upstairs, which I didn't know existed, was the funnel of the Great Eastern, which was found in Weymouth. And we've been to Watcombe Park, which was Brunel's retirement home where he had his garden sculpture. And the plans for those garden sculptures are upstairs, along with the planning of the house. And you can visit the house today, albeit only the foundations were laid. And you've also got plans upstairs of all the trees and the He was garden. meticulous in planning his retirement home and garden, planning where to put the shrubs even, and how big they were and when they would flower. He was that... Uh, was that obsessed with data? Correct. Also, there's a station plan of Paddington. There's a hospital plan of the hospital he went to the Crimean War. And when he was on holiday, he wasn't off duty. He was making drawings of the Karnak Temple in Egypt. And upstairs is a fantastic exhibit. They've got his cigar case. And the last thing I would say, sometimes you hear the noise here of a train. This museum, being Brunel, is somewhat interactive. And you can sit into a simulated railway carriage and you get the chance to draw a circle and the computer will tell you the accuracy of your circle because it was Brunel's objective to have a train service running where people could write whilst they were travelling due to the smoothness of his track. And also, there's a section of the atmospheric railway track here, just like there is at Didcot. And what's it like working in such a wonderful place like this? It, it's, it really is enjoyable. It, and not only do you uh, learn from the exhibits, but you also learn from the visitors' experiences. 
One thing uh, which I would like to mention, um, I'm dressed as would have been Joseph Bennett, uh, Brunel's uh, chief administrator. He ran Brunel's main office in Duke Street in London for 24 years. And we have a recreation of that office based on a painting, a watercolour, done by Lena McCarthy, who was part of Brunel's extended family in 1845. So you're able to come in and absorb the atmosphere of an early Victorian office. I'd like to say that if you go to Duke Street today, you won't find it. It's where the war rooms were. It's been rebuilt, but Brunel's house overlooks St James's Park, and it was reputed to be one of the loveliest houses in the country because Brunel brought back paintings from Venice. Now we'll, fi we'll, we'll finish the video because Mr. Bennett's going to take me and show me the recreation of Duke Street.